Okay, so this should be my Zamia Pseudoparasitica. It's a bit concerning. The box got pretty crushed. It was sent via UPS ground two-day shipping. I really hope the rare plant inside is still doing all right. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so it may have been shielded well enough. Looks like I'm going to have to cut this open instead of just sliding it out because of the crushed middle section. Oh wait, no, I managed to decrush it. I'm very worried about this. Okay, hang on. Ah, oh, that's looking all right. Well, I'll have to look at this. I see leaves coming out of two locations. I'm assuming they only sent me one plant. I guess I'll have to see how that's working. It'd be epic if they by chance happen to send me two. That'd be very exciting. These leaves are really cool. Cycad leaves in general are cool because they're way tougher than I expect them to be every time, especially if it's a species that I haven't been exposed to a lot. Okay, yeah, if it is just a single plant and multiple leaves emanating from it, but a bit more of a developed one than I was expecting. That's actually pretty cool. I did pay for just one, so that's not a problem. Let's get this potted up. Anyone who grows Zamia pseudoparasitica will tell you to grow it in a basket. So I have this wire basket here. And the first step is to coat the inside with cocoa fiber mat, which I've got in a bundle there so that the substrate doesn't fall out. Unfortunately, I don't have a tripod, so I'm gonna have to do this off camera and show you the results. I'm sure you can figure out how to do it yourself anyway. Okay, I've got that done. That's what the outside is looking like. See, there's that side and then that one. I've got it tied in a little bit with twine and twist ties just to hold it in place. I have everything at least double covered except for some tiny gaps down there, which was only single covered, so I'm putting sphagnum moss down there. And I'm now ready to prepare the substrate. I'm gonna mix up the substrate in this pot here, probably in two batches. It'll consist mostly of orchid bark and perlite in roughly a 50-50 by volume ratio, though I will add some sphagnum moss for moisture retention and also to increase the volume a little bit because I think I might not have quite enough orchid bark. Very nearly, so it shouldn't matter. Okay, so that's most of the substrate that I'm going to need. I'm now going to plant the cycad in there while I still have some room to move the substrate around, and then I'll mix up whatever I still need in order to get it to the height I want. Now I'm planting it over to one side because at some point in the relatively near future I may have the opportunity to buy a second seedling of this type and then I'll have space for it to the left, at least until they get big enough to need a container this size all of their own. I haven't seen Pseudoparasiticas in cultivation need a container much larger than this, but I don't mind if that turns out to happen. They're cool enough plants, they're worth that. So now I've got all the substrate in. The next step is to dress it with the sphagnum and then water it in. And there we have it in its final location. You can see the codex right there. It gets some light from the panels up there. And then I've also focused this grow light directly at the growth point. Hopefully that'll help it. It is an understory plant, so it's not going to need the kind of light that something like my latifrons requires, but still I want to make sure I'm giving it enough energy to work with. Anyway, I hope this video is interesting. Thanks for watching. Okay, so two month update. Unsurprisingly, perhaps my Zamia pseudoparasitica was unable to generate a new leaf in the low humidity conditions that you saw it positioned in at the end of the last clip. Now the leaves that were already developed didn't have any issue, it's really only when the leaves are at their smallest, most vulnerable state. So it's really only the case that I need to get the top of the codex into higher humidity conditions, so I put it in this aquarium here next to my Nepenthes clipiata there and then I waited two months to see if it would start growing better, and it absolutely did. You can see right there is the leaf that failed due to low humidity, and then since it's begun the formation of two others, this one and that one, which are going very well, I waited to finish this video for so long because I wanted to make sure that I had figured out how to get it to grow well before posting the video on the off chance that anyone else tries it, I don't want them to be misled about what it takes. 
and well there you go that's what it takes at least here in a an apartment in the winter in minnesota